sinner just came off the street. Only thing they knew, church going on over there. Amen. The usher got turned sideways, didn't see him. He came down there and sat in the chair. He just having a good time, but he in your chair. And all of a sudden, we up here flowing in the spirit, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost ain't moving. We trying to figure out what happened. We think, oh God, what happened? Well, the Lord said, yala nothing. You need to go get that saint who got mad because somebody got in his chair. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to The Overflowing Life. Listen, revival is here, and we have been confessing as a church, we are revival ready. But you know, the enemy is always ready to try to stop the flow of what God is doing. That's why today we're going to talk about four things that can stop the flow of the revival river. As you listen to these four things, the first thing you're going to do is say, hey, Lord, is it I? You know, when Jesus was talking to his apostles at the Last Supper, they all begin to look around and say, Lord, is it I? And we want to make sure that we are not the one who the enemy is using to stop the flow of revival. So let's go to the Metro Church. Let's pick up this powerful word as we continue to study the revival river. All right. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody say indifference. Elijah, when he confronted the people in his day, he confronted them because they were what? Indifferent. He said, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? Amen. They're trying to serve God and they're trying to serve Baal. They got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. One foot in the club, dropping it like it hot, and the other foot in the church, acting like you're not. <laughs> Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. I'm telling you, the days of lukewarm living are over. My God, you cannot, amen, be serving God and still got a back channel to the devil. Secret communication. Oh, my God. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, get rid of that back channel. Yeah, some of y'all got a back channel. You a secret agent sinner. At least the other sinners are sinning out in the open. They at the club, yeah, amen, amen, party over here, party over here. I mean, they getting down, they partying, come on somebody, amen, but you want to be a secret sinner. You want to come to church on Sunday and got a back channel to the devil on Monday, but God is saying the day is out for lukewarm living. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time it's time to get on fire. Amen. So that's indifference. Amen. The second thing that can stop the flow of the Spirit of God is idolatry. Somebody shout idolatry. Listen, it's strange. <laughs> Amen. Moses went up to the mountain, up there in the very presence of God. He went up there to get the Ten Commandments, went up there. That boy having church up there. Amen. He having church. He up there, him and, him and, him and, uh, and Joshua, they up there getting the Ten Commandments. They up there having church. Amen. But then when he got back down, Amen. The Israelites got tired of waiting on Moses. And so, amen. So they say, we, we don't know what happened to Moses. We don't know what, well, yeah, he may not even come back. You know that man crazy anyway. So they turned to the, to the assistant pastor, Aaron. They said, let's make us a God. And so y'all know what happened. Amen. They made this false God. Amen. They made this God of gold. Amen. And they began to worship this idol. Listen to me very carefully. I'm going to link this in in just a minute. Whenever a church gets into idolatry, it won't be long until they're into immorality. Those two go together. Are y'all listening to me? Everybody say, flee idolatry. Three things God told the children of Israel to flee. Amen. Number one, he told them to flee idolatry. Then he turned around and told them to flee fornication. Then he told them to flee covetousness. Amen. Amen. Those are the three things that God told because those three go together. Whenever you get into idolatry, are y'all listening to me? The next thing you know, you're going to be into idolatry and you're going to be into covetousness. You're going to start worshiping your stuff. I've never seen a time when, when people are worshiping their bodies the way you see it now. Thank God that God gave you a, a healthy body. 
but everybody don't want to see it. I'm shocked. I understand the world. That's what the world does. They ain't got nothing there. But I'm shocked when I see Christian women worshiping their bodies. Thank God you ought to be healthy and, 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 and be fine and all that kind of stuff. Amen. But don't get, don't get caught up in that. God has blessed us with all kinds of material blessings. Come on, somebody. Y'all know I've taught that. That's what God wants. He wants his people to prosper, but he doesn't want us to worship it. You don't worship that car. Amen. Don't worship food. You said, Bishop, you're going to eat after service? Yeah, I sure am. <laughs> you're going to find me that. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what, I don't worship it. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. You're supposed to eat for strength and not always for pleasure. I knew it was going to get quiet when I got on there. Somebody shout idolatry. idolatry. Amen. 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 Now, let me, listen to me. Amen. I, I, you know, I love a good, I, I mean, I, I like a good ball game. But the Lord said, okay now. Everybody said, okay now. Amen. You don't put that before the Lord. Amen. Amen. I know y'all might like a good sale. But don't put that before the Lord. Amen. Don't go down and take the Lord's tithe. Tell me, the Lord understand this is a sale, girl. I ain't finna miss this. <laughs> the Lord want me to be a good steward. <laughs> Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Now, I'm, I'm hanging around on this one a little bit longer because in America, we don't think we can commit idolatry because we got a church on every corner. Amen. And we're so-called Christian nation. But I'm telling you, one of the problems that the church got right now, we're full of idolatry. We're worshiping men. We're worshiping people. We're worshiping rock stars. We're worshiping athletes. We're worshiping preachers. We're worshiping all kinds of stuff. We're worshiping our stuff. Amen. And you know, the, the reason that you can know you're doing it is when you begin to put it before God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, let, let's look at this. Y'all want to look at it? Now, let's, look, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. I got to hurry, got to hurry. Amen. And God spoke these words saying, I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord. Now, I know the emphasis ain't on it, but they're, they're, I think that's the way the Lord said, now hold on, I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. Everybody say, he the Lord. He, the Lord. he said, I'm the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shall have no other God, what? Before me. Now, there are four B's that I want you to catch hold of here. Number one, he said, you'll have no God, what? Before me. Anything that you put before God is an idol. I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care if it's your wife, your children, your job, your stuff. He said, you shall have no other what? God before me. But bitch, that ain't no God. If it's before God, it is. Amen, amen, amen. Thou shalt have no other what? God what? Before me. Then he says, thou shalt not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the water. Notice what he said. Not only should you have no other God before him, you should have no other God beside him. And some of us try to be slick. Now the Lord know I got this side chick God. Y'all don't know Bishop knew about that kind of talk, did you? Vincent taught me that. Everybody said, no God beside him. See, some of us trying to be players. We want to hold on to the Lord, but we want that other God too. But he said, you shall have no other God, what? Besides me. These are the bees now. No God, what? Before him. No God, what? Beside him. See, you got to understand, God don't play that. No, no, no. You, you, you're not, amen, going to be with him on, on Sunday and be with your other God on Monday. And he already made it where you don't have to do that. Amen. He said, I am the Lord. You don't need no other God. I can give you anything you want, baby. Ain't nothing you need that I ain't got. I mean, he like Rita Franklin. What you want, baby, I got it. What you need, you know I got it. Come on, somebody. God said anything you want, anything you need, I got it, baby. 
You don't need no other God beside me. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to, glory to God. Guess what he else, he went on to say. Amen. He said, you should not take my name in vain. You'll have no other God before him, no other God beside him, and you'll do nothing to belittle him. You'll do nothing to belittle him. That means when you start taking his name in vain, you're not taking it serious. You're using his name in ways, amen, that, that does not give honor and respect. And I know we all got to work on that. I got to work on that one. So, Pastor Jennifer, get on me sometime. You know when I say get on me, she, we, we hold each other in check. She catch me saying stuff. Amen, I'm trying to, you know, just, just be spiritual. But she said, okay, now you need to be careful with that. Amen, everybody say, do nothing to belittle him. Amen. You got to, have, God's name got to have some power. When you run up against a big demon, you need a big name. And if you've been spending all your time belittling his name, <laughs> gee, Jesus, gee, just hollering his name out and don't mean nothing. Come on, somebody. My God, God's name was so powerful in the Old Testament, they were scared to say it. It was a, it, amen, it was against Jewish law to even write his whole name out. They would write it in code because they were scared to write it. But we're living in a world now where folk cussing and blaspheming, taking the name Lord and a name of the Lord in vain like it means nothing. Everybody say, no God before him. No God beside him. I will not belittle him. And then the last thing he said, he said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That means you're not supposed to have anything between you and him. I knew it was going to get quiet then. What is it that's between you and God? God said, I don't want anything between you and me. He said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. How do you know you got something between you and God when you put it before church? When you put it before gathering at his house and worshiping him, you let that thing get between you and God. And listen, whatever you put between you and God is in danger. I said, whatever you put between you and God, you have just put that thing in danger. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. It's time for the saints of the living God to quit putting. There was a time when we didn't do all this stuff we're doing on Sunday. I'm not against, you know, the, the stores being open and the restaurant. Now. Amen. But y'all need to let somebody off sometime. Shut that thing down every once in a while. When it gets to the point where you ain't got no time for God, that thing has come between you and God. I want everybody to lift both hands to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I, thank you. I, will I will not commit, commit idolatry. idolatry. So we see God is saying here, amen, we get in trouble. We, we cut off the, show of, uh, the flow of revival, amen, when we get into, amen, idolatry. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Now let's watch this, watch this. I gotta, I gotta close this out, amen. So the scripture says here, amen, that these four things will come between us and God. Number one is indifference, number two is idolatry, number three is immorality. Boy, you, boy I heard that pen drop in. It sure got quiet in this church. Somebody shout immorality. immorality. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Indifference is sins of the heart. Your heart just ain't right. Idolatry is sins against God, amen, but immorality are the sins of the flesh. When you commit immorality, you're sinning against the body. You're sinning against your own body, and you're sinning against the body of Christ. Amen. God didn't put those things in there because he didn't want you to have no fun. He didn't want you to kill yourself. He didn't want you to kill your relationships. He didn't want you to destroy your family. He didn't want you to destroy your finances. The Bible warns, I mean, David warned Solomon. Because David had checks going out everywhere. <laughs> I ain't going to mess with that too. David had checks going out everywhere. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He told Solomon, stay out and down there. Everybody said, stay out and down there. He said, a whore will bring you to a piece of bread. I knew I knew going to get quiet then. Bitch. You should have you rephrased. I'm just saying what the Bible said. Amen. The Bible says, a drunkard will come to poverty. God didn't put these things in the Bible because he didn't want you to have no fun. God put them in there because he knew what they would do to you and he knew what it would do to your relationship with him and to other people. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. 
Get your copy of today's life-changing message. We don't want our church, amen, to be some old mausoleum, some old monument. Amen, everybody up in here dead, looking dead, decrepit, and no move of the Spirit of God. Amen, we don't want to do anything that's going to stop the flow. Learn to live the life God designed for you when you order today's message by writing to us. Visit our website or call 1-800-465-6830. Now watch this, watch this. The Bible warns us, amen, against immorality. There's a natural thing that go. Amen, we go from indifference to idolatry, to immorality. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, it says, Neither be ye idolaters, as some of them were, as it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink. They became gluttonous. And then the Bible said they rose up to play. That, that word play don't mean ring around the roses. It don't mean horseshoe. Don't mean domino. When it say rose up to play, it means sexual orgies. They had an orgy. Right there in the middle of church, they had an orgy. If you want to call it church, they had an idol that they supposed to have been worshiping and because that idol had the wrong spirit on it. So you have to understand whatever idol you got, you, that spirit going to get on you. Whatever that idol is, that spirit is going to get on you. Come on, somebody. My God, and the Bible said they rose up to, to they had a, they, they began to become gluttonous. And then the next thing you know, they were having an orgy. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fail one day 300, watch this, three and 20,000, 23,000 fail. Now they fail dead, but how many preachers are falling? How many Christians are falling to immorality? How many, how many times has the Spirit of God been stopped because we could not turn away from immorality? It's time for the church. We got to get the immorality out of the church. It's not God that exposes it. But the scripture says what's done in the dark will come to the light. And God will always warn us. This is a warning from the Lord. Amen. You think you slick. See, because what happened, we, we, whatever lifestyle we learn, we learn to have a cover-up. And normally, it's the cover-up that's worse than the sin. Why? Because the Bible says, he that covers his sin shall not, what? Prosper. At least if you sin and you don't cover it up, you're going to come out of it. But what happened, if you don't want to turn it loose, you learn how to cover it up. You learn how to get slick. You learn how to put another code on your phone, or, or you learn how to go, come on somebody, you learn, you know, you learn how to be slick with your sin. Come on now, but let me tell you something, amen, you ain't that slick. Turn to somebody and say, you ain't that slick. Amen, amen. You, you and her, y'all got a little place where y'all meet. Y'all got that thing down now, come on somebody. Oh, it's getting quiet up in Zion this morning. Come on, somebody. But you got to understand that that immorality will stop the flow of the church. And whatever it is that we got in this church, and we got some in here, or else I wouldn't be preaching it, the Bible says, let not fornication once be named among you as becoming saint. No, it is not all right to fornicate. Uh, Bishop, can I ask you a question? Is it all right? No! 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 Y'all didn't know this was going to happen today, did you? Y'all, we, we ain't finna stop this flow. Everybody said, we ain't finna stop this flow. Somebody shout immorality. <laughs> Let's move on. I think that's about all y'all can handle. Here's the last thing is indignities. Everybody say indignities. Indignities are sins against one another. To some of y'all, y'all felt real good because y'all not into that other stuff. Man, I ain't, I ain't drank no half a pint since I was 15. And I ain't into none of that stuff. I ain't committing adult. I ain't committing fornication. I ain't doing none of that. Uh-uh, Bishop. Get him, Bishop. Get him, Bishop. But let's look at this next one. Indignities. 
These are sin against one another. Shantae, last, in the last service, the last thing she said is, we got to be careful about unforgiveness. See, if the devil can get the church out of fellowship, the anointing going to stop. Look in the book of Acts. Amen, amen, amen. By the time they got to chapter 6, they was in trouble. The Bible said there was a murmuring among the people about the food. Did you know you can cut the revival off just because somebody got in your seat? Did you know that? You can cut the revival off. No, he didn't. Here we are having revival. Revival! The Holy Ghost falling, folk getting slain in the spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, folk getting saved, and then he finna come in and raise hell about his chair. I sure said it. I know he ain't got his behind sitting up in my chair. Here comes some sinner just came off the street. Only thing they knew, church going on over there. Amen. The usher got turned sideways, didn't see him. He came down there and sat in the chair. He's just having a good time, but he in your chair. And all of a sudden, we up here flowing in the spirit, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost ain't moving. We're trying to figure out what happened. We think, oh, God, what happened? Lord said, y'all nothing. You need to go get that saint who got mad because somebody got in his chair. Okay, I feel it coming on. Lift both hands to heaven. Lift both hands to heaven. Say, Lord, you got to help us with this one. Sins against one another. Let's close it out. Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. That's just mess. If I were right now to put mess, I don't put no clamor. We know nothing about no clamor in the hood. We know about mess. Oh, there's some clamor over there. You know anything about no clamor in no hood. It's a mess up in here. Turn to somebody and say, don't start no mess. Won't be no mess. Do you know a lot of folk love mess? Y'all think I'm lying. We checked up on a woman. This was in the earlier days of the church before our church got real big. And sometimes I would actually make the personal calls myself. You know, folk hadn't come into church and trying to check up on them. And, and here's what the woman said. She said, ain't enough mess going on at that church. Y'all, uh, y'all ain't know enough mess. In other words, she would use some kind of mess. She didn't have nothing to talk about when she had lunch. When she left church, she didn't have no pastor to talk about, no choir member to talk about, no, no usher to talk about. She had nobody to talk about. She said, look, I'm going to be honest, there ain't enough mess going on at y'all church. Somebody shout clamor. clamor. Evil speaking. That's backbiting, talking about folk. Putting your mouth on folk. Do you not know putting your mouth on somebody can stop the move of the Holy Ghost? It grieves the Holy Ghost when we leave church talking about each other. I don't care what it was, just go ahead and zip your lip and pray. I know the devil wants you to say it so bad. Well, I got to get it out. No, you don't. Yes, I do, Bishop. Yeah, I got to get it. No, you don't have to get it out. Put it under the blood. I said put it under the blood. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be what? Put away from you with all malice. You know some church folk got malice in them? That means you want to hurt somebody. Huh? You, uh, you do, that means I'm intentionally saying, uh, I wanted to hurt your behind when I said, mm -hmm, I said, I sure did. And I hope it hurt. <laughs> you might have to get on social media to get you. Amen, amen, amen. Is this preaching good, y'all? And be ye what? Kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody say, put it under the blood. Under the blood. Say it ain't, worth it. it ain't worth it. Let's look at this one last passage. I got to let y'all go. Isaiah chapter 58. I love this passage. Jennifer preached on this a long time ago, but I'm going to look at it in the Message Bible. Isaiah chapter 58. Beginning in verse 9 in the Message Bible, if you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins, if you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourself to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the dark. Your shadows, your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. 
I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places, firm muscles, strong bones. That means you're going to get healed. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You will use the old rubble of the past lives to build anew and rebuild the foundation from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, and make the community livable again. How many of y'all are ready to make the community livable again? How many of y'all want to see the streets of Little Rock and North Little Rock and wherever you may live, amen, free of violence, amen, you can walk up and down the road. God said it all begins in the church and the way we treat each other. How in the world can the church go out here and get on these, on these young men who's shooting and banging and we banging? We gang banging in the church. We gang banging with our mouth. Come on, son. We ain't got no Magnum. We ain't got no 38. We ain't got that. Amen. But we gang banging up. Do y'all know we got gangs in the church? Folks in this section and folk in that section and gang and territorialism and all this kind of stuff in the church. But God says he wants the church to get rid of the indignity. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And then finally in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, he says, repent ye therefore and be converted. Why do we have to do that? Look at my fifth point. We paid too great of a price to become revival ready than to allow the enemy to cause us to become revival resistant. Look at the price we paid. All the years we've been praying for this revival. And then most recently over the last three and a half years on the pray, prayer cloud, every morning getting up at six o'clock, we call it the revival time prayer cloud because we want to see revival and we spend all this time getting revival ready and then we're going to turn around and be revival resistant. Somebody shout, the devil is alive. Somebody shout, the devil is alive. <laughs> We must repent quickly of anything that will, will cause us to become revival stoppers. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not going to let you become a revival stopper. So I don't let revival stoppers sit next to me. So you better straighten up. And you better straighten up quick. Say, because you are not a revival stopper. Come on, stand on your feet. Let's give God some praise in the house. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. I know you were blessed by the portion of this message that you heard today right here from the beautiful Metro Church. And if you've been blessed by it, we want you to get this entire series on the Revival River. The Spirit of God told me, based on the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, that a river of revival has been released. But you and I need to know not only how to flow in that river, but to make sure that we're not doing anything to stop that flow. So we want you to go to your phones right now or go to our website. We want you to get this series in your hands. It's going to change your life. Or you can get today's individual message if you so desire. But however you want it, call, write, or go to our website. We look forward to hearing from you. Listen, our time's all up for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week with another powerful word right here on The Overflowing Life. But until then, this is Bishop reminding you, continue to live life to the full until it overflows.